All right, welcome back. Um, we are now joined by an ex Super Falcons uh, player. Um, she's played for Nigeria a couple of years uh, ago, and um, she has a lot to say about um, you know life after football. And uh, she's going to be throwing light into a lot of issues um, talking about women's football. We have the pleasure of introducing this morning Ungozi Omanibe. I got it right. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Uh, it, it's, it's nice to have you here. Um, you know, uh, me as I say, I've had a chat about uh, women's football, and I know you have a lot, a, a lot to say. But first, I must commend you um, for your appearance and everything. How, how has life been uh, after football? Thank you, and I'm glad you're having me here. Mm -hmm. um, it's been good. I can't complain. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's showing. It's glaring. Right. <laughs> I mean. Um, you're a registered nurse, of course, after playing for Nigeria between 1991 to 1995. And since that time, you've been trying to help, you know, some S International who didn't have the opportunity that you had, mm -hmm. you know, to actually, you know, get better in life. How's that been? Tell us about it. Okay. Um, I am someone that believes that uh, if you have something, you should share. Okay. And I happen to spend um, years with these players playing local and international and seeing them looking the way they look was like uh, a blow to me. It brought tears to my eyes and I asked myself, well, is there anything I could do to make life better for these people? Because it could have been me. Yeah. All right, that's one thing we must understand. If you are fortunate to be somewhere, t turn the other way around and think, that person could have been you. Yeah. If you were in that position, would, what would you want somebody to do for you? So I went home and I spoke to my husband. I said, um, I may not have everything, but I think I'm a little comfortable and I can be able to help someone, at least put a smile on mm -hmm. someone's face. Mm -hmm. Things like accommodation or help them start something that could help them in life. If I can do that, I would be glad to do that. So I, uh, my husband brought Paul Ogazier and we asked Paul Ogazier, how can we do this? And uh, he said, okay, he's going to look and ask people questions about people that actually need help. Okay. So that is where I we are now. Let me quickly, I want to take you back a little. In your own playing days, did, did, did your colleagues, your teammates, see education as a priority in those days? You know, when you started playing football, uh, female football was new. Yes. When we started playing, no one was talking about education. It was not in the picture. We just want to be there. We, well, first of all, we thought we were boys. Okay. We want to do the main thing. You remember, it, before it, before us, it was only men that play soccer. Yeah. So you were like in wearing men's shoes, and some of us try to behave like them, wear pants, sag, and uh, try to be macho. We want to look like men because we play men's soccer. But what happened was when um, we went to Holland to play the girls, and we saw this girl, they are ladylike. <laughs> okay. Nothing like the way we're trying to present ourselves. I'm going to think, okay, we can still be ladies even though we play <laughs> soccer. Uh, and um, I think it's been a pleasure. Um, the only thing is that if we knew better, we would have done something okay. at that time. Um, I'm, I wasn't thinking like that too until I met my husband. Okay. He came on a visit from U.S. And um, his friend, Shaidu's friend, was um, the owner of National Sports Link. And I went there for an interview, and that was where I met him. And while we were talking, and he was asking me uh, my educational level, I told him I'm a school shareholder. I said, you could do better, you know. I'm like, what the hell is he talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing football already, professional yeah, football. Yeah, I told him I said, no, you better think about something else. You better think about education, support yourself with education. Without it, you're going nowhere. And I'm glad he told me that. Okay, now you, you took advantage of the American system because m most uh, footballers, I mean, Messi Akide and the others and others, when they get to when they get uh, opportunity to play in the U.S., mm -hmm. they go to school in the process and all that. I mean, it was that you said, 1991 that went to the World Cup, 1995 World Cup. Most of the players, both of them, took advantage of that yes. and went to the U.S., played soccer, and at the end of the day, you know, they went to school. Some yes. other girls couldn't do that. Why is there a factor or something? Uh, I think first is uh, based on your background and uh, what you want at, at that particular time. I happened to speak to a couple of them from U.S. I told them they could come to U.S. trying to get my school to sign them, bring them in for scholarship. But when they asked me how much are they going to be paid, I said, you're not going to be paid nothing. They're going to pay for your education. 
they, they, when they tell you it's 50,000, that will cover your education for the year, your boarding and everything, books. They're not going to give you no cash. You play for them and they give you education. At first, when I got there to, um, when they told me, because, uh, when I signed here, they told me how much they're going to give to me. I, I was thinking that when I get there, they give me some cash, you know. To spend. But when I got to the school, they told me everything has been taken care of, accommodation, book, everything. If you want anything, go to the bookshop. And there was no cash coming to me. I was like, okay. Was it's hard. <laughs> it was happening. <laughs> the first three months, I said, maybe I should go back. Go back home. What am I going to be doing here with no money? And uh, my husband said, you can do it. He told me, you get the education. It's important. So I suck it up. That was what the word he said. He said, suck it up. And I, I decided to suck it up. I stayed and got my education. I am glad I did. I am very, very glad I did. Uh, first of all, I wanted to do physical and health education, but I changed my mind along the way, and I went straight for nursing. I have a degree in nursing, and I work for one of the best hospitals in okay. the world now. Right. Okay. Uh, you know, I don't know, maybe, I don't know what you like. Maybe it's ratio or percentage. You, you look at, you know, your squad then. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the opportunities that you have or had, mm -hmm. you know, to, you know, go. take a step, go abroad. And how many of those people really, uh, she, she asked you about those who were not able to take advantage. Now many years down the line, how many people were able, you know, you know, you're coming back here to help some people. When you divide it, the ones that have been able to live well after football are the ones that are not able. Which one is higher? The ones are, that are not able. It's higher? Yes. Oh. Not a lot of us were able to, we had the opportunity of going outside to go to school. And um, a lot of them went to other countries to play professional. Football. And yeah. Yes. But how long can you play? New kids come up every day. The white kids have been trained from when they were H5. young. And as soon as they displace you, you're done. After that, what next? You're going to coach?